we get up at oh five or a little after, and then we milk our cows. We have we're milking uh, a little over sixty right now, sixty cows, and then the children go to school and. We pack the lunches before breakfast and make breakfast. I do that with yes. the girls' help. The so boys we, each have their job of feeding the cows, yeah, feeding the chickens. Or yeah, we have chickens for or, <laughs> we have chickens for our own chicken meat and eggs. We also have horses. I do some horse training. The boys really enjoy that. They help with that. With 10 people in the house, there's always laundry to do, <laughs> cleaning, meals to cook, baking to do, and Some canning. Bakes. I did over a thousand quarts of vegetables and fruits and whatever. You know, we like to live off the farm as much as possible. And it's good for the children to learn how to do it. They need to help too. We ship raw milk. The milk truck comes every other day. I form certified organic. The food that I produce, the milk that I produce is certified organic. I will use antibiotics on an animal only in an emergency situation. We agree to live the way we live. We agree not to carry a cell phone or smartphone or pocket. We agree as a group, we don't want that. We try to live by the New Testament and what Jesus in his wandering on earth, what he tried to teach the people, we try to go by that. Turning now to the measles outbreak across New York State, an aggressive move in Albany. Governor Cuomo is eliminating religious exemptions for vaccines for school children. Now opponents are reacting to the law that is now in effect. The school district came to our school board and they said, if your children are not vaccinated, they cannot ride on the bus anymore. How did you take that? What, what, what well, we, we didn't fight at all. We just, we didn't even try to put them on the bus. Yeah. Those children are vaccinated. Why are they afraid of? Yes. <laughs> if, you're, if you're protected from it. How could they get yes. sick if they're yes. vaccinated? Right. Right. No. <laughs> Measles, chicken pox, whooping cough. I don't consider those to be life-threatening. And if we have those once, we have immunity towards those. We don't get them again. Did, so, did you have the measles? Oh yes. I had the chicken pox, I had the whooping cough. I guess one thing that bothers me a little bit is, you know, I paid for the taxes to go have my children go to school, and yet I'm spending $18 a day for transportation for my children. That adds up. There's some that have vaccinated just so they can have bus service and there's some that regret it. Hello, I'm Krista. I know <laughs> I have lived in this area my whole life pretty much, and so I've known and been around Amish neighbors. Um, it's been a normal part of my growing up. So how many do you have in here? <laughs> two, two little girls. Hi. We're learning that it's created a lot of confusion and chaos and fear in their communities. They don't know what this means. They don't know what the government's going to do. The state had contacted them at some point to tell them the law had changed. Um, they were afraid of getting fines on their families um, and of course losing their busing, which is a very important way that their kids get to school. And so it's something that's necessary for their children's education and livelihood. The more I read on how these vaccines are made with aborted fetuses and things like that, it, it just does not look right to me in the eyes of God. We always thought we have freedom of religion in our churches and our schools. And we are being told that the state feels they have a right in our churches and schools. It scares us. There was people burned a state 
There was all kinds of terrible persecution. Yeah, you know, terrible, terrible persecution. Ooh, it was terrible. Yeah. yeah. So they fled. They fled. To, they fled to America because the reports were America is free, and the people knew there was a high percentage of death rate on the ships going to America. But that did not scare our forefathers as much as not being able to obey God and praise God in the way we felt was right. And we were able to have freedom of religion, which meant we could have our own churches, our own schools, we could worship God in the way we felt was right. And we're scared now as to what is happening that we might not have that freedom anymore. The repeal itself affected 26,000 children in New York State. And so that has definitely affected more than just the Amish and Mennonite communities, the community at large, families across New York State. So yesterday we had a hearing in Waterloo at the Seneca County Courthouse. Um, we had an Amish man from Seneca County who um, believed that it was wrong what the government was doing and is requesting and petitioning the government to try to overturn that law. The way it got in the papers was that I'm filing a lawsuit towards the state and I'm suing the state. I wish it could have read a plead to the state to repeal the law. It felt like I'm taking a lot on me to try to uh, get this across to the state, what we would like to see. It feels like a big load to me. But the farther this is progressing, there were a lot of people supporting me. Not just in our community here, in but all across the state. I am here to support the Amish in, you know, the right to have religious belief and conviction. The way I see it, the most important thing that we're all standing here for is parental rights in New York State to continue. We are interested in this whole vaccine thing because it affects our schools as much as it does them. We have our own private Mennonite schools and that's why we're here. Medical freedom, religious freedom is very important. We need to keep that going and not let the government dictate what we put in our bodies. We all have a right to medical freedom. Medical freedom, this is medical tyranny. This is hypocrisy. I remember with my oldest, he was in the NICU at the hospital he was born in, and one of the nurses asked me about the Hep B shot, and so I looked into it, and it made no sense for me to inject a shot meant for people with STDs into a newborn baby. So that made me start thinking about it. The nurses will push Hep B. As soon as they are freshly out of my fresh womb, taking their first breath on this earth, you want to inject my child with toxins to prevent them from getting hepatitis B. And I'm not, I don't have hepatitis B, so my child won't be born with this. So why do you want to inject them not even two hours on this earth? So I started to question things, you understand? I don't need to have a science degree or a medical degree to know that it's not right to inject my child with aborted fetuses. Formaldehyde, mercury. If we spoon fed our children the ingredients that are in most of the vaccines, we would, Child Protective Services would be at my door and take me away. But yet, uh, health professionals can inject them into their vascular system, and we accept it. Speak to some of these parents. I myself have not known how many babies had died moments after the vaccine mm. or paralyzed. We'd heard that there was a child that was injured from a vaccine. When we were stopping and talking to her, we did not realize that that was actually her grandchild. 
she had a seizure in the county health office before they left the, the office. She had a seizure. Her mother had not gone with her. Her father had gone with her. And when she got, got home, her mother was just like, what happened to my child? She had to sit down. She nearly fainted when she saw her little girl. She says she looked almost like death. Mm. She was just, the color in her face was just terrible. It was a, I can't even explain it how she looked. She was deathly white. And she had just such a deathly stare out of her eyes. It just about got the best of me. I can't imagine. And now they want to say, well, they might try to do it one at a time and see if she reacts. She gets the one that she's going to react to. She's probably going to do the same thing, probably even worse. You know what I mean? It's simply abusing her. And now she's got problems. She's, she's still not back to where she has. So what made me question it was my kids seem to become sicker. You know, before I took them in, they were just nice, healthy children. And it seems to be after the vaccines, they were sicker. And I didn't correlate it until I started digging. My kids had respiratory issues, you know, sneezing, coughing, and allergies. And, you know, I started to dig some deep in, boom. Here's everything that I suspected. My soul is in black and white, printed by the CDC. Everybody says you can't talk about the religion and the science. You have to either, you just have to focus on the religion because we're talking about the religious exemption. But I don't believe that to be true because if you look at the science and you know how dangerous the vaccines are to your children, then it would be against everybody's religion. So we're up against a blind faith, a blind faith that the general public has in a system that has lied to us time and time and time again. You know, the FDA approved Vioxx. They agreed with the pharmaceutical company. They said it was safe. Somewhere between 50, 60, we don't know how many thousands of people died from Vioxx after the FDA told us it was safe. And the same thing with the opioids. When these companies end up going to court and they end up getting sued for these things which they can be sued for, they end up losing the lawsuits because we find that they had in their own studies already known the risks and already known the dangers and they just put these things out there uh, because they knew they could make the money on it and they don't really care if they get sued because they already made way more than they're ever gonna have to pay in a lawsuit. So these same companies are making the vaccines and these same people who realize they lied about those other things, these are the people who think that the vaccine, they just listen to them when they tell them that vaccines are safe and it just doesn't make any sense. To me, this is a civil rights movement in the process. Our rights are being violated. Our civil rights are being violated. And I will not comply and I will not stand for it. I will protect my family by any means necessary. So Kevin Berry and Jim Ramigas are the two attorneys for First Freedoms that have been um, taking on this um, lawsuit that is um, on behalf of the Amish man and his religious freedom as well as all of our religious freedoms. And so they were the attorneys in court at the hearing that argued uh, to hopefully get the uh, preliminary injunction. The New York State Constitution is from 1777. We were still at war when the very courageous colonists at the time put down a constitution on what we're going to live by and they said we're, that religious freedom is a right for New Yorkers forever and uh, forever did not end on June 13th it's still ongoing. As our expert affidavits show unvaccinated people are not carriers of the diseases that they're not vaccinated for and Dr. Moss goes further in saying someone who's recently received a live virus vaccine that they are a greater danger to the immunocompromised than someone who has not been vaccinated. Uh, I want to say thank you for the courage of our Amish and Mennonite friends for, for, uh, for taking this issue on. So I'm, I'm very aware of the, the reluctance to engage in the judicial system. I'm a lawyer, I'm reluctant to engage. You know, so uh, I can certainly understand from, from their perspective. But it is extremely unusual for the state to take away religious liberty like this. 
And the only way to get it back when the legislature does something as foolish as happened uh, in this legislature is to seek judicial review. So thank you for your courage in stepping up. You know, Judge Wiggins said that unvaccinated children are not a threat to anyone, that the entire thing was overblown and overstated. We kept stressing that, that this is not some kind of emergency where, you know, we need to vaccinate everybody, otherwise people are going to die. I said there hasn't been a death from measles since 2003. So, you know, we hit on all those things and, um, you know, we feel confident that um, hopefully we'll get a fair decision. On the other side, we have an unbelievable alliance of, of, of deep-pocketed enemies to this issue. Of course. And uh, the people supporting religious liberty, uh, they've been very slow. They've been very slow to, to uh, step into this fight yeah. because they're, it seems to me, they're afraid of being called anti-vaxxers. Yep. You know, that, that they're afraid of being bullied by the pharma PR yep. uh, machine. In New York and in other states, there are pending bills for HPV vaccine, which is a success, uh, sexually transmitted disease, there are ministers in New York who are now saying that, that they will rise up to oppose that vaccine being mandated, yeah. but they're too late. They're, or unless we can restore the religious liberty through the courts, they're too late on that yeah. issue because the religious ability to opt out is gone. Correct. And here come HPV vaccine and some of the other 200 flu shots. Flu shots and some of the other 270 vaccines currently under development. Correct. And so if you don't keep the religious exemption to, to opt out now, you're accepting the future vaccine schedule. I guess I'll say this. We would very much appreciate if we could just live here amongst our communities and have our own schools the way we've had for the past 50 or 60 years. And let the choice be to the individual how they want to do in the vaccines. We just hope we can go on in our community and live here in peace and be law-abiding citizens. But I'm not doing this just for our community. I'm doing this for everybody, including Krista here and, and Kevin and Jim and everybody. I don't want it just for the Amish. I want it for everybody. We believe Jesus told us we shall be law-abiding citizens as long as it is in compliance with God's word. And what does Jesus instruct if it's not, if the law is not in compliance with God's word? We want to follow what Jesus taught us.